I want to welcome you all to LPP's first webinar. I'm Eric Lerner, and uh, I'll start by introducing you to our team, and then you can introduce yourselves, hopefully. Uh, this is Marley Subramanian. Hello. And this, who is, all well, like myself, a plasma physicist, and this is Fred Van Russell, who is a electrical engineer, and we also have Derek Shannon, who is our, at the moment, business consultant, and also a volunteer for Focus Fusion Society. So, what the format of this webinar is going to be, is basically going to be three parts. We're going to start off with a general introductory presentation to Focus Fusion. Now, I know that for some of you, a lot of this will be review, but we've got new people here as well. Um, the second part is going to be somewhat of a surprise, but it will involve seeing our, our uh, machine in action. And then the third part is going to be a general question and answer discussion period, um, which will also include surprise. So we've got a couple of surprises planned, and basically we want to go straight into the presentation. So that's what we're going to do when I'm going to start. All right. So what we're doing here is what we believe to be the fastest route to cheap, clean energy. Our goals are very ambitious. The goals of the Focus Fusion Project is to demonstrate in roughly the next eight months the scientific feasibility of Focus Fusion energy. That is to demonstrate that it should be possible to get out more net energy than we put in. The second goal is to develop a prototype 5 megawatt electric generator in the next four years, and to develop in the same period easier spin-off technologies such as ultra-high intensity X-ray sources. Focus Fusion is the name that we've given for the combination for controlled nuclear fusion using a device called the dense plasma focus using hydrogen boron fuel. So that combination of dense plasma focus device and hydrogen boron fuel is what we call focus fusion. Why are we interested in hydrogen boron fuel? The great advantage of hydrogen boron fuel is that the reaction produces all charged particles. The reaction is what you see on, on your screen. Hydrogen proton plus boron 11, which is the most common isotope of boron, combine at high temperature to form briefly a carbon nucleus, which is too excited to stay together, so splits into three helium-4 nuclei and releases 8.9 MeV of energy. Now, the reason it's important that these are all charged particles is that these particles in motion are electricity. So to capture them as electricity in the circuit, all we have to do is essentially use uh, a form of high-tech transformer. We don't have to transform the energy into heat, boil water, run a steam turbine, as people have been doing since Edison, which is very expensive. So potentially we have a very large reduction in costs. Second, it's the neutrons that produce radioactivity. The primary reaction we're dealing with produces no neutrons. And secondary reactions that turn approximately one-fifth of one percent of the energy into neutrons, the neutrons are so weak that they can't produce any radioactive waste whatsoever. So this is sort of the holy grail of nuclear fusion is using this fuel. But it's difficult because, first of all, the temperature in order to burn this fuel the energies are over 100 
thousand electron volts, which is the equivalent of about one billion degrees. And second of all, there's a lot of X-ray radiation that cools the plasma because the X-ray radiation is proportional to the charge, the square of the charge on the nuclei, and boron has five charges. So it's 25 times as much uh, X-ray radiation as hydrogen or deuterium. Potentially, you can have an extremely compact generator. This is an artist's conception of a focus fusion generator with the core of the machine being those electrodes uh, producing the bright light, which I'll explain in a moment, and the energy being collected in the form of a uh, coil around the ion beam and a series of photoelectric layers and layers of photoelectric generators capturing the energy of the X-rays. Now actually there are three companies as far as we know in the world that are interested in the same fuel, PV11. Other than us, um, there's a company called Trialpha in California which has been funded at about a level of sixty million dollars using a completely different device called the FRC and then there's um, EMC squared which uses a third device called the IEC, the Inertial Electrostatic Confinement. Now I'll briefly mention later on about those other devices, but we're mainly going to concentrate on the device we're using, which is the dense plasma focus. Now that has several significant advantages over other devices. First of all, we're not using artificial magnets to try and confine the plasma stably, which is very difficult because plasmas tend to be unstable. We're using instabilities so that each instability increases the density of the plasma. So what we're doing is using a natural process which occurs at various scales in quasars, in solar flares, in atmospheric sprites which are a form of very intense uh, lightning to concentrate the energy. We also have the advantage that we can use studies of these much larger scale processes to understand the process we're creating in the laboratory. The third big advantage is that since we are producing extremely high densities up to almost solid density, we burn the fuel much faster. So that reduces the need for long confinement times. Our confinement times are thousands of ion orbits. In other words, we have to have the ions go around in a circle thousands of times before they uh, collide for a fusion reaction. So it's a form of metastability. Other devices at lower density need hundreds of millions of orbits, very high levels of stability, which has not yet been achieved. The result of our advantages is we feel that we are actually way ahead technically. Here's what I mean by being way ahead technically which is, this is a graph that shows the logarithm of the temperature or the energy of the particles in electron volts against the logarithm of the product of density times confinement time, n tau. This product shows at a given temperature how much of the fuel you're going to burn. And these dots symbolize where the race is to achieve PV11 fusion. These black dots are where we want to be. This is the conditions for approximately for ignition of the fuel. This black dot here is the uh, conditions for burning fuel. This red dot represents approximately where we are now. And this purple dot is where IEC is, much lower n tau, and this blue dot is where 
the FRC dry alpha is much lower temperature and density. And this is a, a big fusion experiment, TFTR. And uh, just talking about this as a natural phenomenon, this is a uh, example of a solar flare um, in which the same processes that we're going to see in just a minute in um, this video is displayed on a cosmic scale. And the scale is such that the arrow here is approximately the size of the Earth. Now, I want to just show a brief uh, video of the uh, um, an animation of the operation of the fusion focus. At the heart of the dense plasma focus are two cylindrical electrodes only a few inches across nested inside each other. The electrodes are enclosed in a vacuum chamber with a low pressure gas filling the space between them. A pulse of electricity from a capacitor bank, an energy storage device, is discharged across the electrodes. For a few millionths of a second, an intense current flows from the outer to the inner electrode through the gas. Instabilities first compress the gas into dense filaments. These filaments are little whirlwinds of plasma. The sheath of filaments converges together into a dense pinch or focus, combining all the filaments into one. This filament kinks and twists itself into a tiny dense ball only a few thousandths of an inch across, called a plasmoid. Instability in a plasmoid creates powerful beams in opposite directions. Positively charged nuclei flow in one direction and electrons flow in the other. The electron beam heats the plasmoid to billions of degrees, hot enough to fuse nuclei together to release fusion energy. In sum, the DPF operates by leveraging electricity to induce a plasma state for some gas. It then exploits a series of instabilities within the plasma to bring about controlled nuclear fusion. We call this focus fusion. All right. So the DPF is not a new uh, device. It's actually been going on for about 40 years. But we at LPP have made very significant advances that make this a practical possibility. One is we've developed a quantitative theory that shows in detail how the DPF functions. This theory has led us to design a DPF that we've built here in, in Middlesex, New Jersey with small sized electrodes with higher density and that leads to higher temperature. Second of all, we've developed an axial field coil. The axial field coil is very important because it controls a small initial magnetic field which gives the plasma a small amount of spin it greatly increases the efficiency of energy transfer to the plasmoid. And finally, we've developed an application of the quantum magnetic field effect. The quantum magnetic field effect, which I can explain in the question period, is a natural phenomenon that occurs at extremely high magnetic fields, which we feel are achievable in the dense plasma focus. It reduces the efficiency of energy transfer from the ions to the electrons, and that decreases the X-ray cooling in the PB11 plasma. 